everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and ooh, you know, when we're on this set, we have a lot of news to talk about today. Five huge stories, including potentially a new feature for Breath of the Wild 2 that includes clothing, durability, um, yeah, please Nintendo, don't, uh, destroy my favorite clothes too quickly but uh, before we get into that hey why don't you guys drop a subscribe we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers so why not drop in and become a subscriber before we get there so you can say hey I was there I was part of the club before the club became I don't know three digits long I guess I don't know there's multiple digits of the more like what are we 77.8 hey we also have a massive giveaway event this summer called Prime Gaming Fest it also involves live reacting to Summer Game Fest uh, giving away thousands of dollars worth of stuff and you got to be subscribed to win that stuff anyway so uh, why not just get in now and so you're all ready to go for June all right that being said let's get into today's news and the first one deals with the potential of brand new Sega Genesis slash Master Drive games coming to Nintendo Switch. And this is because the Twitter account Nin Status Update, which is basically one that tracks you know maintenance for Nintendo Switch, noted that there is direct maintenance happening to the Sega Genesis slash Master System uh, you know, network stuff at Nintendo coming up here on the 22nd. And typically when we have such stuff happening, they drop brand new games that same week. And that same week would be this week. So uh, that's just something worth paying attention to because they've actually had this happen the last two big game drops. And remember, when they drop a bunch of games for the Sega Genesis slash Master System, uh, they do it like just rapid fire, like here's 20 games. So we could be seeing a massive drop based on maintenance that's happening tomorrow, so pretty exciting. Our next story deals with Star Fox Zero, because that is one of the Wii U games, of course, that hasn't actually come over to Switch yet. And we know last September, Platinum Games, who actually were the developers of the game, however, Shigeru Miyamoto was actually the person running the team, uh, they, you know, want to bring the game over. They think it's worth bringing over, they think it could get a better reception the second time around, and obviously, Obviously, we've seen a lot of Wii U ports perform very, very well on Nintendo Switch, but they're not the only ones. Uh, the the co-producer with uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, the art character creator, Takaya Amura, went to Twitter of all places, which tells you he's already tried talking to Nintendo privately, not getting the response he hoped. So he went to Twitter to essentially beg Nintendo to let Star Fox Zero get ported over to Switch. Here's what he had to say. Dear Nintendo, Six years have passed since the release of Star Fox Zero today. I think there are some issues, but please port it to Switch. Also, if you can produce a sequel to the animation, because there was an animation that went along with the game back in the day, we will also be in charge of scenarios and content. I look forward to working with you best regards. Now, typically, if you're going to see something like this go to social media, they're really just trying to garner a bunch of fan support for bringing the game over because Nintendo obviously has not responded or has shut down the idea of bringing this game over. And I really hope Nintendo hasn't. I would hate to see Star Fox Zero left to die on Wii U. I understand that aspects of the game didn't really click with some people, but some of those aspects could be cleaned up and modernized for Switch. Also, it's the last you know, decent Star Fox game we've had. So, um, well, we all you know would love a new one. It, it's one of those heh, Star Fox is clearly sort of up in the air on if Nintendo is going to continue to support the IP. So why not at least give us the Wii U one, especially if Platinum Games is already willing to do it and probably willing to bring it over on the cheap. So here's hoping that Shigeru Miyamoto and the rest of the Nintendo team are listening and that hopefully all of our fan reactions to this and our desires to get this game over end up reaching the right ears at Nintendo to make it happen. The Damon X Machina team is at it again. Marvelous XC Games, they brought us at Damon X Machina. Some people loved the game, some people didn't. They are at it again with a new game called Dead Craft, which will be coming to Nintendo Switch and all platforms on May 19th. They actually just announced this game today, and let's just dive into the press release while you watch a little bit of gameplay here. So Dead Craft is the newest deadly and daring game from Marvelous's first studio, creators of Damon X Machina. As if a hey of meteors reducing Earth to a barren wasteland wasn't bad enough, the devastation released a mysterious virus that resurrected the dead. Ravaged by fire from the sky and the dead below, only a fraction of the human population remains, largely clustered in the small outpost where power-hungry opportunists capitalize on the chaos. A rare survivor of exposure to the virus, part zombie, Reed, is captured by the twisted Nebron, leader of the Ark. 
After escaping from the torture table into the surrounding wasteland, Reed is determined to return to the city and exact some apocalyptic justice. Stare in wild wonder as the half-human, half-zombie protagonist Reed slices through foes on a quest for righteous vengeance. Wield his inhuman zombie powers to fend off enemies while searching the wasteland for answers to what happened to the only man he could trust. Build fantastical new armaments, conjure curious concoctions, or even grow and harvest zombies soldiers to stand by Reed's side against whatever the apocalypse throws at him. It's a dangerous world. In order to stay alive, Reed must take full advantage of the dead. Key features including farm the dead to stay alive, plant fresh corpses or just a combination of limbs into the ground and give them a little TLC until they sprout into an undead army of infantry sentries and more. Uh, creeptastic crafting, surviving the apocalypse sometimes means using whatever scraps one can find to make new weapons. Other times it means enlisting a loyal undead to assist in building and running an entire factory of grotesque machinery churning out an unholy amalgamation of survival items. Death defying powers of the undead, Reed's zombie side gives him a powerful advantage in a fight, allowing him to shield himself from danger or swat enemies away like annoying gnats. But as each devoured enemy pushes him closer to his zombie side, he'll have to take care to maintain what little humanity he has left. Become a savior or a scourge. Help out the survivors to learn new recipes or abilities, but if Reed's hard up for money or supplies, shake down a local and take it off of them, as long as he doesn't mind potentially becoming a wanted man. Now the game is going to be $24.99 for the standard version, or there will be a digital deluxe version for $39.99. And yeah, pretty crazy we're getting this game. There will be a free demo available a little bit later, so you will be able to try out the game before you decide to plunge into it, which I think a lot of people prefer. We did get a demo for Damon X Machina, so why not get a demo for this game as well? Uh, so yeah, May 19th, not too long. That's right around the corner. So hey, you know what? Try it out for free and I guess we'll see what happens. Today I'm finally happy to give you a real update on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. My lord, we have not had a real update on this forever. And first up, boom, here's some gameplay because IGN has a bunch of brand new exclusive gameplay and hey, it's always good to see new gameplay of a highly anticipated classic style beat em up Ninja Turtles game, right? Like just saying that already, you know, gives me a little bit of goosebumps. But what's really cool about this game is that Limited Run Games is actually going to be releasing a physical version of this game with a little bit of extra content. Now, Limited Run Games, normally when they do this, they do limited runs of games, but they did note this time around this will not be a limited physical version. They will be actually selling it in you know huge quantities on places like Amazon and maybe a few other retailers. Uh, so that's really good to note. Also, the physical version, unfortunately, will not be their date one. It will be releasing at a later date. But we do have some release news update. We still don't have a release date for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, but we now have an updated release timing, and the timing is this summer so yeah june july august somewhere in there we're going to be able to finally play this game also of note they did announce today that the entire 1980s well 87 i believe technically voice cast from the original cartoon series have reprised their roles for this game so that's obviously really really exciting for those of us that are classic fans of the old school ninja turtles like i am so I'm really looking forward to see uh, where this game's gonna go. Uh, we haven't had a game like this from the Turtle series in quite some time that's actually been worthwhile. So hopefully this one can live up to like the Kawabunga collection coming out that contains all the classic beat em up Ninja Turtle games that we remember, or at least I remember from my childhood. And for those of you that have never played one before, you're really in for a treat. Now our final story deals with a brand new patent from Nintendo uh, filed by a very interesting person. Uh, the original technical designer of Breath of the Wild actually filed this patent on behalf of Nintendo and it deals with clothing and this patent's probably going to apply to a multitude of games at Nintendo because it's not specifically a, you know going to be clothing durability per se however it that could be how you interpret parts of this patent that we'll get into. So we might actually have some updates for Breath of the Wild 2 on how they're going to add durability to clothes. I, I think that's rather fascinating considering some of the, some people love the weapon durability, some people hated it. Now durability to the clothing, that's going to be quite interesting if they go that route. But what's really interesting, of course, is what this general patent means. And first let's read Nintendo Life's interpretation of this patent. So the recently filed patent is for a process called deformation. This is something that stops clothing textures from seeping into an in-game character model. So you know, 
No awkward lack of cape swishing because it's blending into Mario's thigh or something. And no accidental exposed skin in wintry areas. We won't want Link to get cold in the Hebra region, would we? In the image above, you can see a very faint outline of clothing on the character model. On the left, CH1. This is way too close, which would lead to the kind of stitching you wouldn't expect on a person. We imagine this is a particular pain for floaty clothes like skirts. This is what a model might look like before deformation. The table underneath the two figures indicates everything stored by the game's dynamic random access memory, or DRAM. And you'll see that clothing data is stored there too. The character on the right, CH2, however, is the lucky one. No risk of getting a chill because of exposed skin, as the character model has been made smaller, and the clothes are now an extra layer. Previously, devs would have had to make a brand new model to fit the clothes they want to don. So this is just like putting a jumper over your clothes. Uh, this patent has actually sparked some confusion among fans, however, as the patent was filed by Zelda Breath of the Wild's technology supervisor, Takahiro Doda, who we assume is also working on the elusive sequel, which has got some speculating that Breath of the Wild 2 will have armor durability as well as weapon durability. Now, Segment Next, an independent website from Nintendo Life, actually is the one that does a lot of the notations on the fact that this could mean things like clothing durability and in Breath of the Wild 2, as well as obviously making it so the clothing isn't clipping through the character and actually looks more natural. They say, the patented clothing is believed to incorporate durability mechanics, meaning that any armor that, plays wear, that players wear in Breath of the Wild 2 will have a limited number of uses. The armor will hence need to be either replaced or even perhaps repaired, and failing to do so will render them useless. If such a new clothing durability mechanic becomes part of the sequel, players will be forced to keep looking for new armor sets or take constant care of their existing wares. That will also add a new twist to how players tend to stick with the best armor in the game once they have found it. And I do find this to be a rather interesting and almost natural addition to Breath of the Wild 2. We already have weapon durability. Why wouldn't you have clothing durability that, you know, when you're getting slashed at by enemies and lit on fire and, you know, dealing with the elements, clearly your clothing is going to break down. And we've actually seen Link uh, with his armor and, and, and the sword and everything look like he's wearing tattered clothing as is. Now, while that could just be a clothing option in the game, it could actually be already showing off the clothing durability uh, mechanic where the clothing does become more tattered as you wear it and then obviously maybe you could repair it at a tailor or you know by gathering certain materials like we hope you can do a weapons as well we kind of hope that this is a new addition that brings it to the game in terms of hey keep the durability that's fine it kind of forces us to use a wide range of weapons but also allow us to repair our favorite weapons and obviously allow us to repair our favorite armor and clothing so it also means that you might be able to find multiple copies of various uh, you know clothing in the game so I find that to be really cool as well weapon durability you know if if you already have that, why not have armor durability? And obviously, you know, the, the effect that this patent can have on all of Nintendo's games is just really, really good. It's gonna make it seem a lot more natural, not like we just took the Mario texture and just repainted his skin, and then you see really clipping, and the clothing doesn't look like it fits right. So this is gonna affect multiple games, but still, if durability comes to Breath of the Wild 2, you guys know I'm all about that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jets from the Center Prime. Be sure to let me know what you think about this video down in the comments below about all the news, all this crazy shenanigans about maybe Prime Gaming Fest and the few times I've hinted at it to this point. And you know what? I'm going to catch you guys probably on a live stream tonight since we didn't stream yesterday due to the Bucks playoff game. Uh, so we'll be probably streaming tonight. And uh, you're going to see why I'm making this video the way that I'm making this video. You're going to learn tonight that... Uh, this wasn't exactly the most uh, pain-free experience for me. All right, catch you guys in the next video.